Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hello everyone. In this video, we are going to continue on the second part in 7.1 Assets and Bases regarding dissociations constants Ka or Kb and also the pH calculations. In previous video, you have been introduced to the differences between strong and weak acid or bases. So for this example, we're going to look at acid mortality. You are aware that strong species that dissociates completely will form more products in terms of concentrations of H2O plus or H plus, both are the same. But then, for weak species, since partial dissociations indicates less concentrations of product, therefore the Kc value will be small. In relations to Kc value formed, you will be learning another constant value which is specifically designed for acid and bases called Ka or Kb. So the concept is still the same. If it's strong acid, then the Ka value will be large. If it's weak acid, then the Ka value will be small. Since this constant will tell you their ability to dissociate in water, therefore, strong species has no Ka or Kb to be measured. So we'll look thoroughly on each constant. Acid dissociation constants Ka is only applicable whenever there is weak species. Given weak acid HCN dissociates in water, Note that the weak species which undergo the partial dissociations will use reversible arrow. So the product gonna be H3O plus and C and minus. So this Ka which belongs to the acid can be expressed exactly the same as in Kc, where the concentrations of product we have H3O plus and C and minus divided by concentrations of reactant we have Hc and and each raised to some power, if any. Since our example involves only coefficients of 1, that's why we only raise it to the power of 1. The concentrations of water is not included in this Ka expressions, or in other words, is ignored due to liquid water will undergo self-ionizations, which we'll talk more later on. So this Ka value can be converted to become pKa. What is pKa? So pKa is a number that shows how weak or strong an acid is. More precisely, pKa is the negative log base 10 of the Ka value. When we have this negative log, they will show you the inverse relationship between pKa and also the Ka value. Hence, low pKa value indicates strong acid, while high pKa value indicates weak acid. Same goes to the base dissociation constants, but this time around we have base, that's why the name is Kb. So, this time, the equilibrium to involve weak base of NH3 dissociates in water, to form NH4 plus and OH minus. So the Kb can be expressed as concentrations of NH4 plus times with concentrations of OH minus divided by concentrations of NH3. Make sure when you dissociate your base to have this OH minus. Note that this NH3 is not capable to form OH minus on its own, that's why we have water. So usually water molecule is used for weak species. And then from this Kb, we can also change it to become pKb to see whether the base is strong or weak by applying negative log base 10 to the Kb. Auto-ionizations in water is a process where water dissociates into ions very slightly in an equilibrium, also known as self-ionizations. So the keyword here is very slightly, means your chemical reaction should have this reversible arrow. The two water molecules will interact with each other to form the hydrogen bond in just right conditions and they might form the hydroxonium ion and hydroxide ion, one with acid character, another one with base character. And with these concentrations of each species in pure water, which is 1 times 10 to the power of negative 7 molar, made up the ion product of constants called Kw, this is for water, we have both H3O plus and OH minus, equal to 1 times 10 to the power of negative 14 at 25 degrees C. From the product constants of water, Kw, with value of 10 to the power of negative 14, if we apply negative log, it will lead to pKw of 14. So this value tells us the information regarding acid and base. So we can use this scale to determine strength of acid or bases. A scale that measures both H3O plus or H plus and also OH minus ions is known as pH scales. They range from 0 0.1 until 14. So pH is basically got the formula of negative log concentrations of H plus or H2O plus which characterize the acid. Since this negative log indicates inverse relationship, having high concentrations of H plus means 
lower pH value is obtained. So, from this pH scale, value less than 7 is considered acidic. This pH formula cater only for H+. What about OH-? We also have formula that cater for OH- called POH. P, this stands for negative log. They will give you inverse relationship of the concentrations. Lastly, high concentrations of OH- indicates low POH value, same as pH. But due to the scale used is in pH, we could translate this statement in pH point of view. Having high concentrations of OH- indicates pH value is high. Hence, pH value greater than 7 is considered basic. If the questions happen to ask you for pOH but information given is in H plus concentrations, you must first find the pH value. Once pH value is obtained, then pOH value can be determined by subtracting with pKW which is the 14 and vice versa. Let's apply what we have learned so far about acids and bases in the summary. Any change in hydroxonium ion concentrations will cause an inverse change in hydroxide ion concentrations. This is due to both ions are present in all ecosystems. If a solution contains greater concentrations of H plus or H2O plus, means their concentrations of OH minus will be lower. So this solution has got more acid character. Therefore, the solution is acidic with low pH value. In contrast to solutions with greater concentrations of OH minus, their concentrations of H plus or H2O plus will be less than that of OH minus. So this solution is basic with high pH value. If both ions has equal amounts, then the solution is said to be neutral, where both pH and pOH equal to 7. Let's try example 1. A research chemist adds a measured amount of HCl gas to pure water at 25 degrees C and obtains a solution with H3O plus concentrations equal to 3 10 to the power of negative formula. So the questions ask you to determine whether solutions is neutral, acidic or basic, and then to calculate the pH and pOH of the solutions. You need to point out the keyword mentioned in this question, pure water at 25 degrees C. Means you can rely on the iron product constants of water, the Kw, equal to 10 to the power of negative 14 as a reference. So this Kw comprises of concentrations of both H3O plus and OH minus. Since we now have Kw value and also H3O plus concentrations, simply substitute the value to find OH minus which is 3.3 10 to the power of negative 11 molar. If we compare the concentrations of H2O plus to concentrations of OH minus, we could say the concentrations of H2O plus is much greater than concentrations of OH minus. Therefore, the solution is said to be acidic. So we have answered the questions regarding the type of solutions. Moving on to the next part, to determine the pH and pOH of the solutions, since we have both concentrations of H2O plus and OH minus, then we can start to find either or pH or pOH value. Let's see, we start with this pOH value, simply substitute into the formula of negative log OH minus, then it will give you 10.48 as your pOH. You can choose to find your pH of solution by using the formula of negative log H plus, or simply use this pKW equal to pH plus pOH, where you already have your pKW equal to 14, you have your pOH equal to 10.48, then you will get your pH equal to 3.52. Here are the summary of strong and weak species relationship. We're going to relate their concentrations, either H plus or OH minus, to the Ka or Kb value. Then from this value, we'll apply negative log on each of them to determine their pKa or pKb as well as the pH or pOH value. For the first case, if we have high concentrations of H+, means their Ka will also high. What will happen to both pKa and pH value? Since this P indicates negative log, means their pKa and pH value will be low. So this tells us that the solution is going to be strong acid due to these concentrations of H+. In contrast to this trend, where concentrations of H+, and Ka are going to be low, their pKa and pH will be high. So in terms of acid, there will be weak acid. If we happen to look at OH- minus concentrations, so the information usually lead to base. High concentrations of OH- minus means high Kb value. 
Therefore, their PKB and POH will be low, hence strong base. Lastly, low concentrations of OH- means low KB value. Their PKB and POH will be high, therefore weak base. There are two types of problem solving involving weak acid or weak base. The first one, questions gives you equilibrium concentrations, means you need to find Ka or KB value. While for the other one, given Ka or KB value and some other concentrations, you might need to find other equilibrium concentrations. Apart from these two problem solving methods, you will also be asked about degree of dissociations, also known as degree of ionizations. It is a measure of to what extent the weak acid or base could dissociate by considering the change in concentrations of reactant against its initial concentrations. Another formula to know is the percentage of dissociations. This percentage of dissociations has exactly the same formula as in the previous formula, but this time we have percentage in our final answer. Before we start looking at example involving calculations, let's first look at the differences between strong and weak species. When you're given strong acid or base, make sure to form chemical reactions with single directions arrow indicate complete dissociations. This strong species require only initial and final value. You can call it as IF table where you have initial and final in here. And then there won't be any Ka and Kb value provided or being asked when dealing with strong species. And then the pH or POH value can be determined directly from the formula. For weak acid or base, the chemical reaction should have a reversible arrow indicate partial dissociations. So weak species require ICE table to be used since there will be Ka or Kb value arises from weak species. In order for you to find K, then you need to first have concentrations at equilibrium. For this example, base is used means KB expressions can be obtained. Not that water is not counted as it is in liquid states. And then when you have OH- concentrations, you will first find POH. Then if the questions ask for pH instead, simply relate it to pKW where you're going to have this 14 minus with pOH obtained from the previous questions. Let's try this example too. Dimethylamine, CH3, 2, and H, a key intermediate in detergent manufacture, has Kb of 5.9 10 to the power of 94. Then what is the pH of 1.5 molar, CH3, 2, and H? So by looking at the information given, you have this Kb. This Kb indicates that this species is a weak species. So dimethylamine, we have this nitrogen, means it's a base, and then they are weak based. So that's why you have this Kb value. And then we know when we're dealing with weak species, then we need to form this ICE table, including this initial change and also equilibrium concentrations. Then you need to first construct the chemical reactions involving dimethylamine. We know amine is a weak base. Therefore, dissociations of base should form OH-. At the moment, this dimethylamine has no OH, so we need to add water in order to yield OH-. So given to you the initial concentrations of this dimethylamine of 1.5 molar, so simply put it in here. What about this H2O? Just put a dash because it's in liquid state. And then the product hasn't formed yet. Then we put it zero. And then as for the change in concentration, simply put unknown because the reaction is moving forward, decompose into OH- and also this plus charge. Then we're going to have negative X dash positive X and positive X. They are only one because the coefficient is one. And lastly, as for the concentrations at equilibrium, simply add these two, then you're going to get 1.5 minus X, X and also X. And then we are going to find the pH. This pH indicates the concentrations of H. Or in this case, we're going to first find this OH minus. So your OH minus now determined by this X. You need to first find what is X. So at this row, by having these concentrations at equilibrium, we can relate it to the constants at equilibrium, which in this case, the Kb. So first, express this Kb, we have these concentrations of CH32 and H2 plus OH minus divided by concentration CH32 and H. Simply substitute the value Kb with 5.9 10 to the power of negative 4. Here we have X2 and then 1.5 minus X. 
Since this weak base involves only partial dissociations, means our KB is very, very small, then we can assume this KB is very small. Therefore, we can assume this 1.5 minus x to become only 1.5. And lastly, we can determine our x value, which is the same as in the concentrations of OH minus, to give 0 0.0297 molar. So to find pH, we need to first find pOH because we only got OH minus concentrations in here. So substitute into the formula of negative log OH minus, then you will get pOH of 1.53. To get this pH, we need to rely it on the pKW, where pKW with value of 14, simply 14 minus 1.53, you will get your pH of 12.47. That's all for dissociations constants Ka or Kb and also the pH calculations. Thank you.